The job of identifying the dead and injured is extraordinarily challenging. Young and old, Canadians and foreign visitors. But even without certainty, families have been told to prepare for terrible news. When I left the gym, I saw all the bodies. <laughs> Sorry, I saw the body on the road. Most of those killed were carrying identification. The Toronto Police but the coroner says that job. isn't enough, uh, especially when the damage to bodies is so extensive. Frankly, it takes time to get records and it takes time to meet families. And so that's not a resource issue. That's really, you need to uh, ensure that you're talking to the right person. You take the time to do that. What is known? Two South Korean citizens are among the dead, students studying in Canada. So too is a Jordanian man here to visit his son, Munir Habib Abdu Al Najjar. 80 year old Dorothy Sewell was on the street, perhaps enjoying the lovely weather in her retirement. Grandson Elwood Delaney is now mourning her loss. It wasn't an accident, right? It would be easier to deal with if it was, you know, you know, nature cause or, you know, a little accident, but to go out this way. This woman's best friend is among the victims. Anne-Marie D'Amico was just outside her office when the young woman and volunteer was struck down and killed. In a statement, her family says it comforts us knowing that the world has had a chance to know her and that her message in life will survive her death. Altruism rather than anger and hatred. I went to school with her and her and I were very actively engaged together in many different student groups. Uh, she was uh, a star amongst uh, amongst. Uh, many different people, and she really was, uh, in so many different ways, um, uh, uh, a beautiful human being. Others are grievously injured. Ryerson instructor Amir Kumarsi is in intensive care. Haider Firas was Kumarsi's student, but the two have remained close in the years since. Amazing man, really amazing man. And last contact I had with him was four days ago. Just four days? Four ago. days ago, yeah. Among the injured are co-workers of the dead, elderly residents and others. As they arrived at trauma centers, nearly all at once, it was controlled chaos. It was, you know, unimaginable. You know, I'm, I've been here for 14 years, I've seen a lot, but it was definitely, um, you know, very traumatic, but at the same time, as a nurse, we're trained to do this. And I and David, there is a remarkable story of a man who had a very close call. Certainly, but he's also very lucky. Morgan McDougall is his name, and he felt something. He heard something, turned around, and got his body turned around just in time to see the van, got out of the way partly, but was struck at 50 kilometers an hour, thrown unconscious, a big gash across his head, picked up by paramedics, taken off to hospital. But not only has he survived, but compared to so many others, he is lightly wounded. He's been released from hospital, but Ian, tonight he is back there because some of his friends were not so lucky. And so let's talk about the people who remain in hospital. Obviously, their conditions are private. They should be. Uh, but we do know from Sunnybrook, one of the nearest trauma centers to here, that took about half of the patients, that all of those who are still there are in intensive care, Ian. All right, David. Thank you very much. Thank you. Even before the vigil here was set up, this crash site had become a gathering place for so many in the community. And behind me, you can see notes and signs and flowers from people who are really trying to come to grips with what's happened in this community. I saw the carnage, I saw bodies on the streets, and I felt like somebody has to do something. Konstantin Gulich was moved to start this memorial to honor the victims and support the community. People who are just walking by, but they, everybody needs a moment to heal. Everybody needs their canvas to express uh, themselves. All day, people stop by to leave messages of love and grief. This road, I walk every day, you know. Really, every day we are just uh, doing, you know. But it's... Uh, but I just feel so terrible. This is my road every day to walk. And at time, like, 1 o'clock, <laughs> I walk every day from Finchan, Young and Finch to Young and Shepherd. Yesterday I decided to go to the gym instead. People are in pain today, like, you, you know, you're going on the subway knowing that even though quietly we're not talking to each other, 
people are thinking about, you know, what happened. It's become a gathering place for community leaders, members of a nearby mosque coming to pray. Being a national community, it was important that we could be here uh, with our message, uh, which is the motto of our community, love for all and hatred for none. And politicians, Premier Kathleen Wynne side by side with Mayor John Tory, laying flowers. It's very sobering and very somber. This place will forever be a scar on the, on the city of Toronto, but one of the things about all scars uh, is that they're part of the healing process. And the Premier saw firsthand how this attack has left some in the community shaken. As Wynne left, she met a student from Seneca College where the suspect studied. Right now, everybody's the security is heightened, so you'll be okay. Is there somebody who can go with you? Wynne tried to comfort her, suggesting she contact the school, which is offering counselling.